Today, Enric's vision of expanding the Vortide clan into a kingdom becomes a reality. Find out how he executes his devious plan to get there and secure his spot in the realm as I play 400 Days of Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. If you haven't seen the previous videos, check them out now. Link down below. It was nice to finally take a break and spend a few nights in the castle. All of this constant adventuring and war is definitely tiring. Nevertheless, we must go on. It wouldn't be possible to conquer all of Calridia while I sit in a castle with my feet up in the air. I honestly should have waited a few more days before heading out though. My wife Sylvan had fallen into labor and given birth to our very first son, Denoric. I was ecstatic. The Vortian bloodline now continued on, and we didn't have to worry about it ending. I was contemplating turning back my army of over a hundred men just to go see Denoric. The only issue with that is I was already almost at the castle where the tournament I was supposed to fight in was being held. It only made sense to just go to the tournament and win some money from it, so that way I could bring home some new gifts for my newborn baby. So that is exactly what I did. I entered the tournament and started to fight my heart out. The first round was a 4v4v4, and my team was dominating. We did so well that by the end of the round, my whole team was still alive. The second round wasn't any slower. We had taken out all of the enemy teams within a matter of minutes. It wasn't until the third round that my teammate had been taken out. But don't worry, I was the best archer in the whole arena so I had taken out both enemies without even trying. The final round had arrived quickly. I was immediately rushed by a highborn warrior who made the mistake of swinging first. I collected my highly coveted horse that I won as a prize. The only thing that was on my mind was to getting back to the castle to see Sylvan and the new baby. I wasn't able to stay long and immediately headed back out to go and kill bandits that were plaguing our lands. It was my personal duty to be able to provide all of the money that we needed to keep this clan up and running. It did seem like we had quite a lot saved up, but it really isn't that much when you think about it. The amount of dinars that we're going to be spending once we have a kingdom is going to be insane. So right now, every single one counts. I don't want to waste any time or waste any money. I stumbled upon a bandit camp. This was going to be a gold mine. All of the forest bandits in the area bring their loot to this one location. So if we could clear it out and then loot the bandit hideout, you know that we're going to be rolling in dinars. Our raid began as my Vortian sergeants had rushed the enemies to take out the first little campfire. The enemy stood no chance against my heavily equipped sergeants. These men were the most respected and feared in my clan. They had the most experience in war and they were very calculating and precise when it came to battle. We had arrived at the bandit leader and his men. There was no way that I was going to fight this bandit leader in a one-on-one -on -one duel. I was already pretty injured from earlier, and I wasn't going to stoop as low as to fight a duel with a bandit leader. These guys had no honor and no respect. As my men had finished clearing up the rest of the bandit camp, we had made our way into some western empire lands. That was when I saw a very stacked caravan. This had given me the idea to return back to the little choke point between kingdoms where I took out a whole bunch of enemy caravans at the time. I saw one of my own caravans and then I decided that I would take out the next caravan that comes through here. There ended up being three. One of them was Vlandian though and I didn't want to hurt my reputation with the Vlandian kingdom. I set my troops up in their usual fighting formations. I had then rushed in to attack the enemy horse archers. They were trying to do their own engage on my troops, but my archers were prepared and I had also moved in to take them out. Nothing ever beats the feeling of riding into battle by yourself, taking out as many enemies as you possibly can. Once the enemy horse archers were weakened, I had sent in the rest of my troops to finish off the job. It didn't take them long to take out all of the enemies that were trying to defend this caravan. In a matter of fact, it had only taken them a couple minutes. Most of my troops were all veterans who had seen war before, so they knew what they were doing. We had then collected all of the loot that we had gotten from the caravan, and that was when Nogan had received a marriage offer to marry some lady named Nadia. We both didn't really know who this lady was. So, after doing some extensive research, we found out that she was from the Western Empire. It seemed as it was in our best interest to accept this offer. So, Nogan got married to her. 
I was very happy for my brother. I had found Sylvan, and now he had found Nadia. We both could also expand the Vortide family line even longer now. This also secured a pretty peaceful relationship between Nadia's family in the Western Empire and the Vortide clan. It was surprising to think that the beginning of our journey began with our parents dying and the kidnapping of our siblings, to us getting our siblings back, both getting married, and owning our very own castle. There was no reason to hold on to all of the goods that we had gotten from the caravan, so I ended up selling them at the Western Empire city of Ordesia, and then I bought a brewery there. Nogan's wife Nadia had finally met up with our party. Her stay was short-lived though, as I assigned her to go be the governor of Nevian's castle. I also led our party back to the lands that we owned. It was nice to see Nogan riding around defending the land from bandits. I had also made my way over to one of the villages where I had gotten the quest to bring the villagers tools. I sent Sylvan out with a detachment of troops to go and get this job complete. It was in our best interest to keep a good relationship with the nearby villages to our castle. That way, whenever we needed to recruit troops, we would have extra options. I had arrived back at the castle where I was finally able to sit down at the throne and relax a little bit. I then had a little feast and manage the current projects going on at the castle. Since the standard of life was pretty good here, I made sure that the toll collector was our first priority. My party made its way out back into the lands of Calridia. I had peacefully met someone from another clan and then targeted a Vlandian caravan. I know I avoided this earlier, but I figured that they would have the type of armor that I'm looking for. I was definitely getting a little bit bored with the armor that I currently wore, but I didn't know if there was anything better I guess we are going to find out. The raid was super simple and we were able to hold a choke point on a bridge. The enemy caravan had sent its horsemen in to attack us on that bridge, but they obviously had no success. We then were able to take out their back lines and steal all of the goods that they had. Not too long after the caravan raid, I had enlisted in an arena tournament. To no surprise, I had won. It honestly seemed like a good time to track down yet another caravan. I didn't want to target the same factions that I had already destroyed a caravan a part of, so I headed over across the world into the Kuzate lands. Well, that caravan stood zero chance. This might have seemed like a pointless trip, but I wanted to take out a caravan that wouldn't really affect my relationship with the kingdom that I really cared about. To also make the journey even more worth it, I was doing tournaments on the way back. This way, I would be returning with a whole bunch of extra loot and dinars that I didn't have before the trip. The time was almost upon us. The Vortide clan was so close to getting tier 4, which meant that we would be able to establish our very own kingdom. I only needed less than 20 renown to establish that kingdom. While riding around, I had noticed a very large Batanian army. I ended up confirming that suspicion as I saw two Sturgian armies collide with that giant Batanian army. This had inspired some very grand ideas in my head. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more 100 day content. Also, go check out my merch store, link down below. I was always scheming of a way to take over Pendrea Castle. Well, now that could become a reality. Especially with half the Batanian forces distracted with all the Sturgian forces, I would be able to swoop in and take this castle with ease. I just need to get my kingdom up and running. It seemed like the fastest way to do this would to be to get a whole bunch of renown in the shortest amount of time. This could easily be done if I had taken out a pretty large Batanian army. So that's exactly what I went to go do. I approached the nearest Batanian army and immediately started to attack. They had around 20 more troops than we did, so this was going to be great for gaining renown. We were attacking the Batanian forces at one of their own villages. This meant that they were going to have a little bit of extra reinforcements from the villagers. The fight started with me 1v1ing the only Batanian horseman. This was a pretty intense duel, and he was able to get a couple hits off on my horse. I, however, did prevail and took him out with my long spear. It seemed like right as I had taken out the horseman, the rest of the Batanian forces started to rush out of the village. That was when I retreated to my troops, and we started to engage all of the enemies. After winning the battle, we had gained enough renown to level up to Clan Tier 4. I then headed back to the castle of Neviansk to talk to Nadia. Once there, I had told her that it was time to declare our own kingdom. This new kingdom was going to be founded on Vlandian values and beliefs. It's also going to be called the Kingdom 
of Vortia. It was at that exact moment that all of my clan companions and family members had gathered around the table to establish our kingdom and plan out what was going to happen with this next war. It was pretty cool because the new room that we had set up allowed me access to see all of the information of what was currently going on with the kingdom. I could even see all the different policies that we had enacted since we founded the kingdom on Vlandian policies and beliefs. I couldn't afford to waste time thinking about our kingdom's policies. So I immediately started to summon all of the parties in my kingdom and then started to engage on another Batanian army that was nearby my castle. This battle had gone how they all go and we were victorious. We had taken out the enemy lord. I then headed to all the nearby villages to recruit more troops. Fighting those two battles was easy, but at the same time, I did take on some casualties. Once the army was slightly recovered, I had taken on yet another battle with a Batanian Lord. We outnumbered his army by around 20 troops, so this was going to be an easy battle, especially considering I had a lot more veteran troops than he did. It was time to take things on the offensive. I made my way over to a Batanian city. It looked like the Sturgeons were taking on that city and wanted to siege it. So I figured that I would help them out in their efforts as this was going to weaken the Batanian army even further which would open up a window of time for us to attack the castle of Pendraic uncontested. The Sturgeons didn't attack the city immediately. A small Batanian army of around 400 had tried to sneak away from the castle. I rode my much smaller army at a faster rate to catch up to this Batanian army. They didn't know it yet, but I was trying to act as a bridge between the Sturgeon army and the Batanian army, so that way I would be able to take out the Batanians with the help of the Sturgeons. I was very happy with myself because this allowed the Sturgeons and I to take on a whole Batanian army and take it out without having a lot of casualties. While riding back to my kingdom, I had bumped into Jemenes of the Hand. He was a part of the Clan of the Hand. I enlisted that clan as mercenaries into the kingdom of Ortia. This entailed a simple contract as the clan of the hand would be taking on the enemies of Ortia and I would be paying them for it. Usually I like to take on these responsibilities myself, but having a bigger pool of troops to draw upon when we needed to invade a castle was the goal. I summoned one of the parties of my new mercenaries to join my army. I also then went to recruit some more troops from the nearby villages. It seemed like it would be a good idea to be overprepared for my siege of Pendraic. I had noticed that one of my mercenaries was fighting an enemy Batanian party near the kingdom. So I moved in to assist as I wanted this smaller army to join my bigger army. We were nearing around 300 troops now and that seemed like it would be a good amount to take on the castle. The siege began and we started to prepare the siege camp. It looked like things were pretty balanced. The enemies had more troops than we did, but we had more experienced troops. I really didn't expect this, but it looked like quite a few Batanian parties made their way over to try and interrupt my siege. I immediately stopped building the camp and then tried chasing off some of the enemy parties. Unfortunately, there were quite a lot of them, so I had to retreat back to my castle and wait for the enemies to disperse. The enemies had finally decided to leave me alone, but that was when I noticed a huge party of 700 Batanian troops marching on my castle. It seemed like they weren't super interested in what was going on here or trying to siege the castle at the moment, so I was able to head out and take out some of their smaller parties as I didn't want them to assist their larger party. After taking out quite a few Batanian lords, I tried to lure the large army into sieging my castle. It seemed like they really weren't that interested. It honestly seemed like they weren't even interested in attacking my castle. I'm assuming that they just wanted to prevent me from going around and taking more of their lords as prisoners. If that was their intention, they were definitely doing a good job at it. I had to waste quite a few days just sitting at the castle. I then tried to move in and take out some of the smaller enemy parties. My attempt wasn't successful. The large Batanian army would immediately charge me any time that I got close to the smaller ones. This made a lot of sense from a strategic standpoint. I was pretty impressed that the Batanians came up with this strategy. It surely was working though. That was at least until I started to put all of the enemy lords into my prison. For some reason, this made the enemy snap, or it maybe just gave them a valid reason to try and attack my castle. 
the huge army of almost 800 Patanian troops finally came and laid siege. I was pretty excited about this because I had a lot more veteran troops than they did, but they had twice the amount. I also happened to be very competent with my strategies. Talking about strategies, another large Batanian army of around 700 had joined the siege. We were now outnumbered by roughly a thousand troops. Things weren't looking good. I really needed to employ my best possible strategies in order to come out of this alive. As usual, I had put all my infantrymen right where the enemies would be scaling the walls on ladders. I had them set up an impenetrable shield wall. That way, the enemies wouldn't even be able to step foot on my castle walls. This would also prevent them from being able to gain any ground. The enemy surrounded the whole castle. It honestly looked like thousands of ants were running at us. Since the last siege, we restocked on explosive bombs. This was honestly a necessity for us, as it was going to be the main way that I took out the enemies trying to climb the ladders onto our castle walls. Each bomb that I dropped was taking out 10 plus enemy units. This strategy alone was changing the tide of the battle. You could see the total amount of battalions dramatically decreasing. After doing as much as I could with the bombs, I had to personally get involved with the defense on the right side of our castle. Unfortunately, the enemies were making it up onto our walls. So, I had to pick up one of the axes that were laying on the ground and start hacking away at all of the enemies coming up the ladder as well as the ones who already made it up here. I was attacking from behind the enemies that made it up on the castle wall. This was a very strategic point to attack from, but it also was a little bit hard because I was stuck in a tunnel and had to pretty much make things work. After quite a while of hacking away, we gained control of the situation. The enemies were still making it up onto the castle wall, but the second that they would drop on it, they would end up dying. I had more troops rush over to this ladder that all the enemies were getting up from and start to defend it better than they were before. Unfortunately, there were just so many enemies that they were able to break our line once again. I also didn't have too many troops remaining to help out on this right side of the castle. As I was doing my part in the siege, I ended up falling off the castle walls. I got completely injured and passed out. This was very bad as I wasn't able to lead my troops for the rest of the siege. Thankfully enough, they pulled through and completely defended the castle from all of the attacking Batanians. The Batanians might have had a chance if they really stuck with what they were doing, but they decided to retreat once there was quite a lot of them taken out. That was insane. We had taken out over a thousand Batanians in that fight, while only losing around 200 to 300 men. I was knocked out for quite some time after that battle. Nogan hit lead until I was 100% healed. He had finished off all of the remaining enemies that were at our castle and actually laid siege to the castle of Pendraic. Conveniently enough, the siege was going to start right when I was fully healed. I immediately made my way over to where our siege camp was and led the assault. Nogan had informed me that we didn't have any siege equipment to take on this castle. So I did the only thing that I could. I had all of my troops just immediately rush up to the castle ladders. I was given information that an enemy catapult happened to be in the farthest left tower. So I made sure that all of my troops were only going up the ladders on the left side as this catapult wouldn't be able to target them. Despite only having around 10 days to recover from my last injuries, I immediately made my way over to the castle walls. I raised the very first ladder as I wanted to make sure that my troops were able to get up onto those walls as soon as they possibly could. The enemy catapult was able to shoot some ammunition over at my troops, but it only took out three of them. I was super happy that only three of them were killed by this catapult. This proved that my strategy of only attacking the left side of the castle was effective. Sure, it would be a little bit slower than if we had troops on both sides, but the catapult wouldn't be able to take out 10 plus troops every single time that it shot. To me, this was definitely worth the trade-off. It's also possibly the reason why we might win. I had a lot of faith in this castle siege as we outnumbered the enemies by around 200 troops. So it did seem likely that we were going to be successful, but you never know what could happen. Since I didn't climb up the ladders myself, I was pretty much sitting down below pelting the enemies with bolts from my crossbow. Sooner or later, I did run out of bolts. 
and I couldn't find any on the battlefield, so I had to pick up a bow and collect the arrows that were down scattered around. One of the ladders ended up falling during the siege, so I had to get it back up with some of my troops. Once it was back up leading to the castle walls, we started to make a lot of advancements. I even snuck over to the right side of the castle, got up a ladder that nobody even realized I was climbing, and I made it behind enemy lines without them even realizing it. Right as I stepped foot onto the castle walls, two enemies immediately started to attack me. There were also some archers shooting arrows at me. This was probably one of the most stressful things in the world because my life flashed before my eyes. I just barely was able to take out the one enemy that was fighting me. It seemed like all of the other enemies decided that it wasn't worth it to take me on and went to go and reinforce the right side of the walls. This honestly kind of saved me because I didn't know if I was going to be able to take on four enemies all at the same time. The siege was pretty much over at this point as well. My troops had made it successfully onto the walls and were taking out all of the enemies that were left in the towers. The very last defender even tried hiding away. He ended up dropping in between the gates of the castle where none of my men were at. Well that plan backfired, all of my troops were ecstatic and I was even more. We had just conquered our second castle. The kingdom expands. I wanted to start things off right with the new population of the Pendrea castle. I showed them mercy instead of pillaging or devastating the village. If I was going to be a good ruler, I was definitely going to have to treat my citizens right. This decision might cost us some prosperity bonuses, but it'll be worth it in the long shot. I wanted to make sure that we had strict rules and policies in the castle as I didn't want people to revolt. So, I appointed Sylvand as the governor of the castle. I had then disbanded the army that Nogan prepared for this invasion. We had secured the castle of Pendraic, and I was pretty satisfied with this gain. My plan now was to peacefully negotiate with the Batanians a surrender. I would say that we were easily winning the war. The Batanians did however have more troops, but they were taking on more casualties, had less prisoners of ours, and also lost a castle. Before we can try and negotiate for that peaceful resolve, it looked like the Batanians wanted to put up one last fight. They outnumbered our army 350 to 300. I wasn't concerned though, as we did have more veteran troops, and also, taking out Batanians really wasn't that hard. It seemed like overall, they had a lot less equipped troops than we did. Of course, I had marched forward and took out as many enemy horsemen that I could. Once the time was right, I had moved my infantrymen up while covering them with my archers and crossbowmen. It's time to charge! I had strategically sent my first line in to engage with the enemy's first line. I then had my horsemen get in position, ready to flank, as the enemies didn't even realize they were so close to them. When the moment was right, I sent my horsemen in, and we started to completely devastate the enemies. It seemed like this was probably the best strategy to take in this course of action, because there were a whole bunch of enemy infantrymen and not a lot of archers. So this strategy worked out perfectly. It really wasn't long until the enemies conceded defeat. I was able to take on some prisoners, and then I had to formally appoint myself as the ruler of Pendrea Castle. This honestly seemed like a funny thing to do, but I wanted to set the precedent for all future rulers to make sure they make their decisions fair and square. It was also time to make peace with Batania. We were absolutely smoking them. Right when I had proposed a peace offer, they replied saying they would pay 870 dinars every single day as a tribute to make peace. Now that's what I'm talking about. It was now time to celebrate in the Kingdom of Vortia. We had just completely won a war and gotten a new castle out of it. My troops were also spreading across the land. The only thing is, I was paying mercenaries now a whole bunch of money when they didn't need to be paid. There was no war going on anymore. So, I decided to relieve one clan of their mercenary duties. Unfortunately, it didn't seem like they took the contract ending very well. Obviously, we're not at war anymore, so there's no need to be paying mercenaries to do a whole bunch of work that they're not doing. Well, honestly, that's their loss. If they don't want to work with me in the future, then that's going to be their problem. I pay good dinars. The war was finally over, so I could now take a look at all of the different policies that I could propose for the kingdom. There were quite a few. 32 to be exact. The first policy that I brought on was Sacred Majesty. This allowed the ruling party of the kingdom to gain 3 influence per day, but it took away 0.5 influence from non-ruling parties. 
This was a good way while creating a kingdom to make sure that my family stays in power. This might seem a little bit dishonest, but we literally created the kingdom. So all of the Vortide family has a birthright to rule. I had then also appointed the royal privilege policy. This allowed the ruler of the kingdom to override popular decisions at a reduced rate of influence. This seemed like a very good policy to have because what if somebody tried to overthrow the Vortide family? If the coup was staged and everybody tried to get us out, then this would be a great way of being able to hold on to our power and suppress any rebellions. It was super nice to get an overview of my brand new kingdom. We had now expanded to two very strategically placed castles. In the scenario that we had to defend one of the castles, we could draw upon troops from both to deal with the siege. I stored all of the loot that I had gotten from taking out so many Batanians inside of my castle of Neviansk. So I went to go retrieve most of it and brought it to one of the nearest cities where I had sold it for over 30,000 dinars. I had then made my way into the Vlandian lands as I wanted to buy some new armor that was better than what I was currently wearing. I didn't end up finding anything. I tried on a whole bunch of different armors, but the only thing that was a little bit better was around 200,000 dinars, which I was not going to spend. After getting fed up looking for some armor at a couple of cities, I set up a caravan from Praveen. One of my companions got displaced from their other caravan during the war so it made sense to get another one up and running. I continued my search for slightly better armor or equipment in Sargod. I ended up coming across a shield that was lighter and more durable than the one that I currently had. I bought that shield for around 10,000 dinars. I ended up riding by a Sturgeon castle. It looked like the Vlandians were trying to siege it. This was pretty crazy because that meant that I could possibly utilize even yet another war. When I was back at my kingdom, I appointed my sister Alda as the new governor of Pendrea Castle. This was ideal because then she could level up her skills to become a better leader. I was then back and forth between my castles because I wanted to make sure that everyone was working on the correct upgrades and they were getting the resources that they needed to be extra productive. Since we were no longer at war and the kingdom was doing pretty good, I decided that it was time for me to head back out. I wanted to spot new opportunities that could possibly expand the kingdom as well as meet any new companions that could potentially help. While I was traveling, my brother Varric had reached young adulthood. I decided that it was time for him to travel as an envoy to increase his charm skill. As he left, I had also mentioned to him to never let his guard down. This would improve his strategic skills. It was awesome to see the Vortide family growing up and expanding. Sooner or later, I hope that it gets big enough for us to rule all of Calridia. Until then, we're going to have to keep expanding and growing as a kingdom. If you want to get more involved in the Vortide community, check out my Discord link down below. There's some incredible lore that links the videos together, as well as a really cool leveling system. Join now!